the moment you want the truth, as badly as you just now wanted air, you'll find it. We can show you the truth, but you have to want it. Show me. I want to know the truth. I want to talk to you this morning about the battle that rages for your mind. You are in a mental battle, maybe the likes of which you've never experienced in your lifetime. And I'm going to share with you the reasons why and how it's important that you and I win that battle now. In Genesis chapter 6, beginning at verse 5, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I've created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And the scripture is describing a time in humanity when people had become incapable of hearing the words of God or following any thoughts except their own. And you have to be aware that Satan is coming against this generation in an unprecedented measure. He is attacking this generation to take the thoughts of God out of the minds of an entire society. He's doing it through the school system. He's doing it in our colleges. He's doing it in the marketplace. He's doing it in the halls of government. And he's even doing it in the house of God, trying to eradicate everything that comes from the mind of God to blind an entire generation, to take captive as many as he can, for the scripture says he knows that his time is short. That fallen nature that was sown into humankind in the Garden of Eden, that which is resident within you and me. As the people of God, it's so important now that our minds become shrouded in this book. And as Paul said, whatever is of virtue, whatever is of good report, whatever is praiseworthy, whatever is lovely, think on these things and the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. It's time to get out of the seat of the scornful. It's time to stop associating with sinners. If we're associating for any other reason but winning them to Christ, it's time to make the break, folks. It's time to get oil in our lamps. We don't have that long. Folks, do you know how close we are to the coming of Jesus Christ? The Bible tells us we don't know the very day or the hour, but we're not children of darkness that that day should overtake us as a thief. Can you see it? Do you understand that we're on the threshold of the return of Christ now? He's right at the door. He's, get your lamp out. Trim your lamp. Get ready. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. That's got to be the cry of the church now. The bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Get oil in your lamp. Get ready. The Son of God is coming. The world as we know it is coming to an end. It's all coming to an end. This insanity in the Middle East and nation now rising against nation. Calamities coming upon the earth just as Jesus said they would. All leading to this definitive moment. Folks, the ungodly know that Christ is coming. There's something in the hearts of every man, woman, and child that knows the hour we're living in. We're living in the season of Christ's return. As in the days of Noah, his thoughts are continuously evil. He doesn't think they're evil. But when you have expelled God from the borders of your mind, there's nothing left but that which is created out of the human spirit, which in contrast to the holiness of God, of course, is evil. Psalm 15 verses 1 and 2 tells us the person who speaks the truth in his heart will be given the power to stand no matter the difficulty of the time. That's why Hebrews chapter 3 and 4 three times says, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. If you can still hear God, don't harden your heart. If God is in your thoughts, if God is fighting against that which wants to occupy your mind, if you feel like there's a war going on inside of your head, thank God there is a war. That means two opposing sides are still there. When there's no longer a war, you've either given into one side or the other. But thank God there's a war. Thank God that those of us who know him, we, we can't do wrong without being convicted of the Holy Spirit immediately. We fight in our minds. But the difference is that the true believer 
God is in our thoughts. He stands as the one who says, come to me in your time of struggle. Come quickly to the throne of grace that I may help you in your time of need. God is with us in our thoughts. I thank the Lord for that with all my heart. And he promises us victory and power to withstand the downward pull of this fallen generation. And there is a huge downward pull to conform now in this generation. We are living in a time very much like Daniel's time when statues of are being raised up of what man says, this is what the image of society should look like. And when you hear the music, you better bow or you're gonna suffer for it. God is the only one who can give us the power to stand. God is the one because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses four and five, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. That's why it's so important to win the battle of the mind. That is the battleground that we've got to fight on now. And that's where the battle must be won that there's only one name given under heaven whereby men might be saved. Coming in and believing that when we pray, God hears us. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin and I'll heal their land. Jesus said, now my eyes will be open and my ears will be listening for the prayer that is prayed in this place. It's time to pray, folks, it's time to pray. It's not about a program. I'm not talking about a program. It's time to pray. It's life or death for people now. It's time to pray. It's time for you and I to go down on our knees and begin to petition God. It's time for us to make a decision. As Joshua said to the people of his day, if it seemed difficult for you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you're going to serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Authorities in the town of Cushing, Oklahoma, say most of the damage from a magnitude 5.0 earthquake appears to be downtown. The earthquake struck the town northeast of Oklahoma City on Sunday night, bringing down building facades, shattering windows, and leaving bricks scattered in the streets. There were some minor injuries, and police blocked off some areas. The earthquake was felt as far away as Iowa, Illinois, and Texas. And a very powerful 7.8 magnitude earthquake hit New Zealand's South Island on Sunday, triggering a tsunami alert for the entire East Coast. Prime Minister John Key said in a news conference that as of dawn, two people had been confirmed dead. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the earthquake struck 91 kilometers northeast of Christchurch just after midnight local time. A series of large aftershocks, some measuring more than six in magnitude, continued more than an hour after the biggest quake. Now, because of extreme drought conditions and wildfire threats, a state of emergency is now in effect here in Tennessee. News Channel 5's Emily Luxon is live in Nashville to show us how this is impacting all of us. Emily. Well, that's right. You know, this is normally a dry time of year, but this year the conditions have been pretty extreme. And take a look at this map. It pretty much sums everything up. It shows the entire state is impacted, but you can see Middle Tennessee is in a severe drought, while Southeast Tennessee is experiencing extreme or exceptional drought. And this is a situation that's keeping meteorologists at the National Weather Service busy. 
There's been some wildfires in the eastern part of the state and we're doing a, a call every morning with the fire agencies because of the concern with drought. Gordon says we haven't seen any rain in November and September and October were some of the driest on record. We are down about six inches on the amount of rainfall for the year and eight Tennessee counties now have burn bans in effect, including Robertson County. The Smyrna Utilities Department has enacted voluntary water reductions and is asking everyone to conserve water by not watering their lawns or sidewalks or washing cars. And meteorologists say the bad news is looking ahead to the next three months, not much is expected to change. What the outlook is for the next three months is warmer and drier than normal. That doesn't mean that we're not going to have some cold snaps. It doesn't mean that we can't end up with snow. But overall, the average, the, the whole time period, the next three months, you're going to, we should end up warmer and drier than normal. And Tennessee is not the only state battling these dry conditions. Much of the southeast and even the southwest are seeing similar situations. And ye shall hear of wars, and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be. But the end shall not be yet. For a nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Utterly consume all things from off the land, saith the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea. Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. After school clubs are an American tradition, Girl Scout meetings, recreational soccer, soccer games, and youth group at church. And up until now, it seems every child had a club that made them feel at home, except Satanists. Yeah, CBS 19's Taylor DeHaze tells us about a new after school club coming to your child's elementary school led by the Satanic Temple. 
This advertisement for the After School Satan Club may seem hokey, but it's very real and it's legal. And if they want to set up shop at your child's school, they can. It all goes back to a 2001 court case. Good News Club versus Milford Central School. The case states any school allowing secular clubs to use its facilities must also allow religious clubs the same privilege. That case was much like Pandora's box. It opened the door for the Good News Club, a faith-based after-school program, but it also opened the door for any other religious-based after-school program including the After School Satan Club. On October 19th, the first After School Satan Club in the country opened at a Portland elementary school. While that is currently the only club, the founding group, the Satanic Temple, is attempting to start programs in nine other states, including Texas. The Lone Star State has three Satanic Temple chapters, making elementary schools here next on the list. San Marcos, San Antonio, and Austin. So I took a drive to the Capitol to meet Satanic Temple member Jeremy Galloway. My favorite thing about it is how open the group is to new ideas. Galloway says the clubs have nothing to do with the devil or religion at all. It's completely uh, divorced from anything supernatural. So there's no supernatural beliefs. There's no red guy with horns in a pitchfork. He says parents should look past the name before making any irrational judgment, despite the logo of the group a cartoonish devil with horns holding a crayon. Satan's involved because it's coming from our organization, the, the Temple of Satan, and we identify as Satanists. Chapter leaders say the monthly meetings include a healthy snack, literature lesson, creative learning activities, science lesson, puzzle solving, this one is compassion, and an art project. And instead of playing with toys like these, your children may soon be coloring pages out of coloring books like this one, featuring an upside down pentagram and a goat head. Now this page is out of the official After School Satan coloring book. If a child, for example, asked, why is the sky blue? Where do rainbows come from? Our response would have nothing to do with religion. There's no reason to mention God or anything supernatural whatsoever because we have really great scientific explanations for these things. Galloway says the Satanic Temple is targeting schools with good news clubs first. In Austin specifically, there's seven schools uh, that we've identified um, that uh, have the good news club as an after school program. So. We're looking at those uh, seven schools in Austin. Uh, there's one in Round Rock as well. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The religious monument continues to cause a stir in the Four Corners. Some people want it down, but Devin Neely explains the city of Bloomfield still has a chance to keep it. Thou shall take down the monument, says a decision by the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals published yesterday. All in all, we were very pleased that the Tenth Circuit continued the ruling that the monument placed by the city of Bloomfield on its front lawn is unconstitutional. Andrew Schultz was lead counsel for the ACLU in the case against the city of Bloomfield. In 2012, the ACLU filed suit on behalf of two Bloomfield residents that feel the monument to the Ten Commandments is inappropriate to have on the lawn of City Hall. The city of Bloomfield maintains that their law that allows private citizens to place monuments is proper. Anyone can put a historical monument on the lawn. Uh, that doesn't indicate or endorse religion in any way whatsoever. But a decision to appeal has not yet been made. That's up to the city council. A decision could be made in the next few weeks. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. I know you're not supposed to talk about politics and religion, but we're already talking about politics, and so I'm going to go the R direction, too. I never know from one election to the next who's going to be in the Oval Office, but I always know who's on the throne. And I'm on this earth because God created me, and that's who I answer to. I'm a Christian. I follow this guy named Jesus. You might have heard of him. And the greatest commandment he gave me was to love others. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. 
by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. And scripture also tells us to pray for our leaders. I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray for Donald Trump. I'm going to pray for all those people right now who feel like they're on the outside looking in, who are afraid at this point. Pray for them too. In short, I'm praying for America. And I'm praying that one day we're going to look back and we're going to say, you know what? That Donald Trump presidency, that was all right. But I'm praying. The Lord Jesus Christ has returned for his people. 1 Corinthians 15, 52 says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. The rapture. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. I'm sure there's truth in what you're saying. But Buddha spoke truth. Muhammad spoke truth. Muhammad. What religion are you in this week? I'm well read. There's nothing wrong with that. I believe a little bit of everything. And I try to keep an open mind. All right, all right. Look, there's some truth in all those religions. That's what makes them so dangerous. Let me show you something. Every word in this book is true. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. If you're someone that has not called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, today is your day. There is no promise of tomorrow. He died on that cross at Calvary for you. The Virgin Mary did not do it. Buddha didn't do it. Allah didn't do it. Muhammad didn't do it. Any other false gods or idols did not do it. The begotten, only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, He bled for you on that cross at Calvary. He gave His life for you so that you can live eternally. <laughs> because we're all guilty. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But the choice is yours. You're given free will. The gift of God, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So if you have not made that decision, make it now. He loves you. He loves you so much that he died for you so that you can live through him. But any other way, any other name beside Jesus Christ is not going to lead you to the kingdom of heaven. The Bible says for there, in 1 Timothy 2.5, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Acts 4.12, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
He loves you. Romans 10.9 says that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. To so call upon his name today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today. He died for you, so live for him. Be born again today because except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Being born again does not mean literally being born again through your mother's womb. Being spiritually born again. A new mind, a new spirit, a new heart. Striving for the things of the kingdom of God. So make the best decision of your eternity today. Because the trumpet of God is about to sound. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Son of God is coming. So keep your eyes to the skies. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. The King, Your King, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, is coming. What must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. into judgment, Ben Judah, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. I, the Lord, search the heart, I test the mind, and I will give every man according to his ways and according to the things he has done. By the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified in his sight. For by grace you are saved, through faith, and this is not for yourselves. It is the gift of God. Be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, to save the world through him. He who believes in the Son is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Repent. Jesus is coming. Don't throw your life away. Give it to Jesus while there's still time, please. And he will hold us accountable. Time is running out, and I don't want you to go to hell. <laughs> You've sinned against God, like I have. He calls us to love and obey Him in everything we do, what we do in front of people, what we do in secret, even down to what we think. God loves you. 2,000 years ago, He proved that. God became a man. Jesus Christ, and he suffered and died on the cross to save you. He literally died to take your punishment and my punishment upon himself so that we could be forgiven and set free. When Jesus rose from the dead and he ascended to heaven, he defeated death and hell, and he's offering you and I eternal life. 
God can do anything. And if you are willing, God can save you. Confess your sins and turn away from them. And put your faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus, if it's not too late, forgive me for my my sins. Jesus is King. Jesus is King. He is Lord forevermore. Jesus. He's coming soon. He is Lord.